William Hopefully, your favorite videographer from Two Hats Publishing. I welcome you to another Two Hats special of community events. Let's look in and see what's really happening. And good afternoon and welcome to Lambda Weekly. I'm Dave Taffet here in the studio with Ron Landis and the late Patty Fink. Um, you know, and Patty normally calls to tell us she's running late at a quarter of. She called a 20 of. Instead of getting here at a minute or two after, she got here at 5 of. So Imagine her phones that. must have been five minutes early today or her clocks and you're here. I think it's an eclipse or something. Uh, maybe that's what it is. Uh, <laughs> our guest today is David Brigman. He is the executive assistant with the Miss Gay US of A pageants. Miss Gay, U.S. of A at large, Miss Gay, U.S. of A classic, Miss... U.S. of A pageantry. Pageantry. <laughs> U.S. of A pageantry. Just, just sum it all up in one. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, but his greatest claim to fame, and I love this, he was sued by Donald Trump for uh, uh, infringement or... The company, right. The company for... Uh, and I, I do love that. Oh, kudos. That's, uh -huh. a, that's a badge of honor. Well... Oh. I don't know if we would call it honor, but... <laughs> they call it expensive. But everybody remembers it. <laughs> and, whatever, and what we're talking about is the, what we now know of as Miss Gay USA Bay it used to be Miss Gay USA. Yeah, right. tell the story, so Tell David. the story. Yeah. Well, when when the, the company was bought by Jerry Bird out of Houston in 85, it was the Miss Gay USA pageant. And he ran it as Miss Gay USA for a while, and then... When Donald Trump bought the Universe pageant system, which included Miss Gay or Miss USA, he decided he didn't want to have a Miss Gay USA either. So, because he's going to be the best president for the gays, about all the best Correct. people. <laughs> so, I don't know that it was thought about back then, but you know, it, it, it may have been in his mind. It, it just shows where his thinking is toward right, right. Uh, gay people. That right, it, nobody's going to confuse the two pageants. No, no, no right, not at right. all. I actually prefer the name Miss Gay U.S. of A. Somehow it just flows better than the Miss USA pageant. It just seems like there's something missing there to me. So well, we're, we're, you, we're used to calling it that now after 20-something years. So, you know. So you got the better name. Stick with it, correct. But let's yeah. clarify. It's not, you guys didn't fight him. You just said fine, whatever. Uh, we didn't have the money to fight him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they changed the name. Yeah, I mean, you fight a lawsuit like that, it's going to cost you. Oh, yeah tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars when you're up against a billionaire uh, you know against a bully who, who a so called uh, billionaire I like the word bully first he, he's a bully he is a bully yeah, so right. you know um, well let's talk about the pageants first of all your main do you call it your main pageant your uh, uh, some people call it the mother the mother pageant the okay. mothership of the system you know <clears throat> it's, it's the one that's been around from the beginning and, and it's the one that people here would know the best because it's held here correct and that's the Miss Gay U.S. of A pageant. Correct. That's uh, usually held at the Roundup. Correct. Uh, and when is that held? In May of it, every year, the week before Memorial Day weekend. Okay. You have one coming up, the Miss Gay U.S. of A newcomer pageant. Correct. Next week. It what is that? Held one? at the Roundup again. Uh, it's for the, the newcomer girls and... Newcomer, it could be defined as somebody that has not held a uh, state or a regional title, can't have been a top 10 or 12 contestant at the national pageant for some of the, the nationals that are, are big and popular, uh, can't have been on a reality TV show. And oh, that rolls David out now. <laughs> well, Ron, well, you're well. so eligible. <laughs> <laughs> and Patty, you can't compete either. I know, I know. <laughs> um, oh, boy. And it... it it brings anywhere from 40 to 60 girls from across the country to mm -hmm. Dallas to compete. This year it'll be a three-day pageant. It's mm -hmm. the first, second, and third, which will be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday um, at the Roundup. And it, it's really grown big enough to 
I would put the girls at Newcomer on some, sometimes on the same or better level than some of the girls that compete for Miss U.S. of A because they really spend the money and go all out. Now, by Newcomer, though, what you're not talking about her is somebody like Laurent who hasn't done drag before. And well, just decide no, this he, is a kick, and maybe I'll do it. Well, I or, mean, if not if, necessarily. If, if th that's how most of the, the drag queens get their start is they haven't done it, they want to do it as for fun and a kick, and they like it and continue on. That's I mean, if you ask most of the girls, that's how they really started out. Mm. So yeah, I mean, it, he's if, if he wants to put on a dress, I'm sure we'll allow him. <laughs> Uh, no. Your daughter would enjoy dressing oh, yeah, she you up. would. She would love it. I mean, I've had my nails painted and lipstick on more than what I, I like to admit. Well, maybe you but, should um, have <laughs> And you, have a man, you could have an instant manager right there. That's true. That's true. You know, on the, we, we always like to brag on the show that, you know, we are the longest running LGBT show, um, radio show that we know of in, in history. And so, I um, mean, people are always surprised that it's here in Dallas. Um, I think people are also really surprised to know that probably the biggest drag system is also in Dallas. You know, you would think, if, I guess people who aren't familiar with the drag shows and the competitions, they might think automatically think New York or, or San Francisco or something like that. No, it's right here in Dallas. We, we're the largest franchised system for this art. <laughs> in the world, basically. So if somebody is competing in the Miss Gay U.S. of A pageant, um, they're con and I know it varies every year, but approximately how many different um, pageants are there that lead up to this one? Uh, well, I, uh, that number can vary mm -hmm. because you have to start out at a local level most of the time. So you've got your local prelims that go to the state prelims, and you've got your state prelims that go to the national prelim. So you can have five or ten local prelims that get you to the state pageant. You can have 15 or 20 or 30 state prelims that get you to the national pageant. So it can vary every year. That's why you see the number of contestants different each year. I mean, there, there have been times when we've had, this was before we had the other divisions in U.S. of A, where we had 80 contestants from this U.S. of A. Mm -hmm. And you know it's just a week long pageant, so it's it's it's. So if you had like you had one year you had Miss Wichita Falls, correct. Then you know the next year they did Wichita Falls didn't put one on, right? So that year that you have less contestants maybe, but then maybe another one pops up in you know San Antonio, right? I mean and, you, know, you you never really know from year to year. I mean you've got your group that will stay true to the system. Mm -hmm and have their prelims every year. <laughs> then you've got people that will come in and, and only do it for a year or two because they want to experience and, and it's either fun or not fun mm -hmm. for them. <clears throat> so the numbers really can vary. Um, we can have anywhere from 30 to 50 contestants. You know, mm -hmm. It just depends on the number of prelims we sell. You know, I, I, my cousin used to be part of the circuit. So Lord knows I've been to a number, I can't count how many drag shows I've been to, been to throughout the years. And your shows particularly, you know, before I went, my cousin was like, you know, you have to buy a ticket. You know, it's like going to a concert, and I thought he was exaggerating. He isn't. These are full-blown productions, you know, sometimes with props, um, a set sometimes, a backup dancers, you name it. And they do a bang-up job. Um, do summer, and I know we talked before the show, you don't always know how these, how these girls raise their money to even support that, but have you had any uh, contestants have to drop out because they couldn't really support? All the time, it happens. Really? Mm -hmm. We even have some that, which is sad to say as far as from a promoter standpoint, but we have some that get to nationals after their promoter promises them everything. They get to nationals and the promoter's not there, their mm -hmm. money's not there, their backing's not there, so they're oh, stuck wow. somehow. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So some of the other promoters step in and help out. You know, sometimes the national system steps in and helps out. It just it just depends, mm -hmm. you know, on, on what help is needed. So, it, and it's not cheap. Sometimes mm -hmm. it, it's from hundreds to thousands. Oh, it, it, it's more than hundreds. It has to be thousands because there's all the travel, there's all the dresses and all the accessories. And uh, if you have props and all those yeah. things cost money. Cost right. money. And, and if you do have props, getting the props to where you're going. Yeah, so. because they're already built before they come to Dallas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, they travel in, in U-Hauls and trucks. Um, so you have to rent a U-Haul or you have to, yeah. I mean, right. this is a big production to do this. Um, what's your relationship with something like RuPaul's Drag Race? Uh, 
are your people going on the show or are people from the show coming to your pageants? Well, we've we've had formers, Alyssa Edwards being the big popular RuPaul Drag Race mm-hmm. girl right now. Um, she's a former Miss Gay USA Bay from 2006. Um, we've really, we've had some contestants that have, have came from RuPaul's Drag Race or mm-hmm. some that have been USA Bay contestants and went to RuPaul's Drag Race. Uh, Kennedy Davenport's a big one right now. She competes with USA Bay a lot. Um, it, it, our relationship with them is different because it's it's a different kind of uh, what's the word that you try to, to well they're outlet basically yeah, yeah. you know it's a different kind of outlet it, <clears throat> and um, one of the things that we were talking about before the show the difference. It, th- th- that other um, contestants see with people who have been on something like RuPaul. Um, what is the difference between what they're doing on your shows and what they're doing on uh, on TV? What they get paid after they've been on TV. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, really, that, that's, that's, that's yeah, basically it's, it's the, the money. big thing. There's, yeah. there's really no difference in them as an entertainer. Once you've been on a reality TV show, they think you should be getting paid five, six thousand dollars to perform. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It would be lovely if everybody could afford that, right? Right, right. You right. know, especially in the smaller venues and right. the, the smaller towns, which have lots of, yeah, they do a lot of that. Uh, one of the other bit, uh, uh, bit drag circus is Miss Gay America, not dif- different from Miss Gay of U- USA Bay. Right. Um, what, what's the difference as far as the how the qualifications? Um, the only difference is that with America, you cannot have any augmentation below the neck. With US of A, we have no problem with that. If they've went through hormone treatment or if they've went through... So Laron, who's um, only had facelifts, he, he would qualify for he Miss, still do Gay, Miss America. Gay America. If you but, would. but David can't do <laughs> Miss US of A because of his fake bro- uh, boobs. Qualify with David. This day, <laughs> this David, no. not our guest, David. <laughs> Yours are real, but mine are real. Mine are real. <laughs> okay, so um, people who have had augmentation, um, what are the other contestants thinking about it? Um, not all of them think that, but there are those. And social media being as big as it is today, we all see a lot of comments and posts. But some think that, and, and I'm not accusing anybody of being catty. Oh no, I mean they, <laughs> because they never would be. Uh, right, right, uh, especially on social media. Right, <laughs> right. Um, a, a lot of the contestants, and I say a lot. That's just a, a word that we use all the time when we want to talk. A lot of this and a lot of that. But there are contestants out there that think that they can't compete with the ones that have had augmentation and work done Mm -hmm. because they have to put on pads and they have to add to their body instead of it already being there. Mm -hmm. So, like I've always said, and we were talking about this earlier, and I don't don't know if if we can use the word on Yes. We can? Okay. (laughs) He knows where I'm going. I've, I've always said that tits don't give you talent. So just because they've and had that's work true done, in the heterosexual world, <laughs> <laughs> the bigger, the smaller the tits you can tell. Um, yeah, I mean, just because you've had work done doesn't mean that that makes you talented. Mm-hmm. It just means it makes you look more feminine. Yeah. So you know, and and depending on on the judges that are chosen to choose the winners of that particular pageant. Some may like the feminine look a little better, or they, it may work for mm-hmm. them. But talent, to me, is what's important because if you're not talented, why would anybody want to go spend their hard-earned money in a venue to get in to watch somebody that's not talented on the stage? So if Laurent had talent, even though he make the ugliest drag queen, he could still win. I think he really wants you to start competing. I, 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 I think so. I'm, I'm getting that message. Right. He wants you to, to just expand your horizons I and see, see opportunities see. anywhere you did, did not previously. I see. I mean, you, you, you said you've been around it for a while. I have. Cousin, and you know what? So. And last week I co-hosted um, a drag show. Oh, hey. So... <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> this is the first time anybody has suggested you should actually be in one. That's true. Um, you have another pageant, the Miss Gay US of A at Large pageant. Right. Um, I can't imagine Miss America 
or Miss USA, the regular non-gay ones, gay pageants, having well, anything we call like it the that. Straight pageants. <clears throat> oh, okay. So the straight pageants. Right. Even though you can have lesbians compete in the straight well, pageants. Well, I mean, we we welcome straight folks into our you know system too. It's it, you don't have to be gay to compete in the gay pageant. Oh, now that's you interesting. Just have to be male. Well, remember when we had Charo on the show and she said that she had been in San Francisco and happened upon a Charo lookalike contest and so she entered and she lost. <laughs> she came in second and she's straight. So. That, that's true. But they weren't competing for a title, really. Right. Well, they were competing yeah. to be Charo. And right. <laughs> she just, she just wasn't good enough to Charo, enough. I guess. Right. Somebody did Charo better than she did. Um, okay, so you just but, said that in the Miss Gay US of Bay pageant you do have to be male. You have to be born male, correct? So, okay. So, what about a trans individual if they've gone if they've gone through bottom surgery? Can they still compete? Not in US of A. Okay. There, okay. there are there are a couple of systems out there that do allow that. Um, that's a whole nother topic, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, but I, no, we don't allow it in US of A. Okay. Okay. We don't have somebody sitting there checking either, you right? Know, when they when they come in to, to, to registration, right. right? Somebody who competed last year, maybe during that year they had some surgery. Oh well, and, and it's and, not, and we don't think anything wrong with that. Mm -hmm. if that's how they want to live their life, and mm -hmm. that's the, how sure. they want to go through. Sure, the complete, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it, one of your pageants is the Miss Gay US of A at large, though, right. and, and here was my question: That's interesting. The straight pageants have nothing like that. Um, it, well, it's the as if the pageants are also more of a scholarship pageant, mm -hmm. which helps those contestants or the winners with their education. But larger girls need an education too. Well, I, I, I'm not asking you to defend I, this. I, I, I don't know what to say about yeah. that. <laughs> but that's interesting. We've got some large girls and some skinny girls that need some education too. I, <laughs> but, I don't take that wrong, whoever's listening. But but in your system. People come out, cheer on the girls that are larger, and, and the at-large pageant is for anybody 200 pounds and over. Correct. Um, and um, I, I just think it's interesting, like the Miss America pageant has nothing like that. They have a Miss Older Gay America, or not Gay well, America. The, the, the married. married. It's called Miss. MRS. Okay. Yeah. Um, so they have for older, but they don't have anything for... Larger plus women size who, can be, right. who can be very beautiful too. And most quickly, speaking of plus size, Miss Gay US of A at Large will be held in Dallas in September at the Rose Room. So great. We need to take awesome. a break. Stick with us, David. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, a little bit more about the pageants. We have so much trans news this week that we yes. need to talk about. Uh, you're listening to Lambda Weekly on 89.3 KNON and FM. We'll be back with more right this after. This is Rollins Gellin, and I'm listening to Lambda Weekly on 89.3. And darn glad to be doing it. And welcome back to Lambda Weekly. I'm Dave Taffet here in the studio with Lauren Landis and the late Patty Fink. Our guest is David Brigman. He is the executive assistant with the Miss Gay US of A pageantry. Bridgman. 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 That's okay. <laughs> um, and his claim to fame, as far as I'm concerned, sued by Donald Trump. <laughs> the, com the company. Company. The company. company. Right. <laughs> I don't own the company. I'm just. But, but you know, if your company's been sued by him, I, I would take it real personally, and I would embrace that. <laughs> so. I've seen people on social media, you know, like. Uh, you know, make a meme and stuff about how they've been blocked by Donald Trump on yeah, Twitter. Yeah, I've seen that. And it's a, you know, it's a big, oh, hey, yay, he finally blocked me. You know, so it's kind of the same sort of thing. You know, or, or Baylor getting, Baylor University gaining a lesbian alumni got a cease and desist letter from Baylor. Right. You, know? you take that very, per, you yes. take that very, not personally, but you take, you, you embrace that. We do. Frame it, Absolutely. put it on your wall. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 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 Or the attacks on the media. Very proud of that. I'm yes. just doing my job. Right. <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about one of your uh, pageants is for drag kings. Correct. Tell us a little bit about that. How did that come about? And um, it's uh, there has always been a big market for the kings. They've been around for a long time. There's troops that travel around the country that, that entertain in, in the bars. That uh, it's, it's popular. Mm -hmm. So it's just another 
venue and, and division that we added, <coughs> and um, it's it's taken off. That it's it's had twenty and thirty contestants, mm. you know, every year on the average, mm. and not only for the Kings, we also have a classic division for the Kings, which I believe is over thirty three or thirty four years old for them. And really? then there is a division for the femmes, which are the, the biological women that want to dress in drag, basically. Hmm. So, so okay, there we go, Patty. Well, th so, I think it's kind of interesting. You have thirty-three for women, though. I mean, forty for I've, men. I've always questioned that too. I, I mean, I I think that it. it Thirty-three is still young. Well, I mean, I'm fifty-seven. I think I think, it's I think still fifty's young too, pretty but, young too. Yeah. <laughs> But, but um, thirty three. Yeah, that, that is. I think, yeah. I think it's young, but I mean that's the 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 age they chose, and you know they know their their entertainment quality better than I do. So, well, you know, there's a, a a quote I've always loved: um, "A man in drag is funny, a woman in drag is Armani." <laughs> 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 okay. Never heard of that before. I like it. So which one would you be? Oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We're going to get you in you drag. You give me a drag. You know, we're gonna get I, David is right. Patty to do some king shows. Mm -hmm. David, what are we going to do for I you? will be the MC. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right, David. I, w I would make a horrible looking drag queen. Um, I know. Um, would I say it? Yeah, I it's like, okay, have you all seen the movie Tu Wong Fu? Uh -huh. You know, the Wesley Snipes? That would be me. Mm -hmm. Never say that. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would not look good. Ne never say that. Why? Because there are some really, really, really beautiful drag queens that... Don't really make a pretty person a, a boy. Look. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. uh, gotcha. I, I mean, if if you want to use that as an example, no, no, right? Okay. But, you know, okay. Do you know, there are some really, really beautiful men that don't make really pretty track queens either. <laughs> mm -hmm. So right, you can't right. really say that you know just because I. I I would make a, a bad looking drag queen. It, and that's true because there have been a couple of people just over the years. I can't think of who in particular, uh, but I'm I'm picturing a couple who. You know, they we made really names, beautiful. We want I, I'm, I'm trying to think, um, but they they really made pretty drag queens. And in person, I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm probably the most popular drag queen of all. I think that's the case. RuPaul. Have you seen him out of drag? Not that he's hideous or anything, but he definitely looks better in drag. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody has their own taste. Yeah. What I would say. You know, <laughs> it wouldn't be mine, but everybody has their own taste. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, if you were a person who wanted to get involved in like the newcomer thing, is it too late? For this year, yes, because because every one of our pageants you have to qualify for, except for the state level, for some because they open it up to anybody. The regional <laughs> level is, of course, you don't have prelims to a regional. But the city prelims are basically where you get your start. You start out in the city, then you go to the state, and then you go on to the national if, you, if you're lucky enough to qualify. Mm -hmm. So if there's someone out there who's interested, say they could come to the shows this week. Correct. Um, Got to get a, the, the feel of what's going on. And then maybe next year, come back around and enter as a newcomer. And also a lot of our promoters are there every, every year for the national. So they, they come in as well. So there's promoters to talk to to find out what the best prelim for you to go to is. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's, it's a business for everybody. Mm -hmm. these, these, these queens want to find out who the best sponsor is going to be, um, who the best promoter is going to be. You have to learn how to do it. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, it, it's something that, that they spend a lot of time thinking about, you know. R right. It's not something you just jump into top level. Uh, right away. No. There's lots of stuff you need to know. Right. Um, so your advice, if you're interested in it, start going to some of those preliminaries. Well, it's like I was told when I first got involved with US of A, um, I've always wanted to be a part of the, the, the pageants because I've always enjoyed that, that art. Never done it, have no desire to do it, but I've always been, I've always liked that field. <laughs> But when I first started back in the late 80s, I, I asked Jerry, I said, how can I get involved with your system? And his response to me was to buy a city prelim. Mm -hmm. So start at the bottom, work your way up. You've got to learn, you've got to watch, you've got to grow. Um, just like I was saying that um, Vanity St. James, Miss Gay USA newcomer, 
started out doing drag about six months before she won the national title. Hmm. But wow. she spent those six months studying and learning. And before she started, she studied and learned. And she knew what it would take. So that's what you have to do. You have to, you have to learn. You have to grow. And you have to spend a lot of money. And it is, it is not cheap to do. No, not it's at all. Not, it's an expensive hobby or, for some people now, really a vocation. Yep. But you, know, but you guys don't do the typical things like in a Trump pageant. You wouldn't have a swimsuit. There are some mm -hmm. there are some pageant systems that do have swimsuits. Really? But we don't in US of A. We basically um, have three categories with US of A. With with a female drag queen with with that divisions, it's interview, evening gown, and talent. With the male, it's interview, club wear, and talent. And with the MIs, the kings, it's interview, creative evening wear and talent so yeah basically we just have the three categories across the board and, when, it simple. and when you say talent most of them are um, performers performing songs right the majority you, of them are lip sync or like yeah. like like sarah palin played the flute you know i mean like when she was in her pet right know? but yeah i was just about mm -hmm. to say did you say somebody just won who played vanity st james miss gay use of a newcomer played the cello Less really? Than she won. Yeah. So That's it's awesome. And yeah. she won talent with that. Wow. So, so wow. you don't have to actually get up and lip sync. You don't actually have to lip sync. No. Mm -hmm. um, that'll be good for you, that, that, Laron. That'll because, be really good for me because <laughs> your mouth doesn't quite <laughs> match like the I words said, coming I have out. I three and we'll talk. So. <laughs> <laughs> but well, do you ever get? Here's another thing about RuPaul. I think that always made him special. He does sing live. Do you have any girls that actually sing live? Oh, sometimes? we do all the time. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we just had the Miss Texas US of A, a large pageant, and there were two or three girls that sang live for that. If they're good, does that give them an advantage over the ones who are lip syncing, or is there such an expectation that there's going to be lip syncing that the ones who are singing, it's like, huh, they're singing, that doesn't fit? It, it doesn't matter if you lip sync or if you don't, or if you play an instrument, or if you don't, or if you sing live, or if you don't. It's what you present, mm -hmm. and those five or seven judges that are sitting there making the decision, whatever keeps their attention. I mean, I've had some live singers that have done it for years that bore me. Right. You know, mm -hmm. um, it, it's just... It's they still have on, to be really good. Right. Well, yeah, yeah. And, and each one of those judges have different opinions, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it varies to what their opinion is. Yeah. So, Laron, you can play the sousaphone. <laughs> You'll do fine in your interview. It's that evening gown competition that I'm worried about. I know. About I know. I'm going to need a, a guy. What do you call Just wear things? long enough that you don't have to wear pumps. You can just walk in flags. <laughs> Nobody will ever know. See, that's the thing. I keep trying to picture him in heels, and mm -hmm. it yeah. just doesn't work for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. me either. Uh, I, I'm picturing Hold horizontal or wrong. Hold on. I can picture him in heels before I can picture you in heels, Patty. <laughs> oh, that's a great point. That's so. a great point. <laughs> okay, so, and, and stick around for this, David, because... Okay. Um, uh, it, it, it's related to what you do in in an odd way. Um, well, we have yeah, bathroom does. bills. Yeah. We have um, military personnel affected. Trans, trans, trans. Everybody's, not everybody. Political people are just dumping on them for political gain. What's interesting is the parallel about what's going on in Austin and what's going on in Washington. Supermajority in Austin, uh, they hold the um, uh, uh, Speaker of the House. The head of the Senate is the Lieutenant Governor, and we have the Governor's House. Whole session couldn't pass anything worth anything, uh, and bills that were passed got vetoed. Complete dysfunction going on in Washington. They have a majority. They've been promising health care repeal for seven years. You have the presidency, you have the House and the Senate, couldn't get it passed. But everybody's dumping on the trans community. What's and going on? Let's I, start here locally. I think it's, um, I really think it's the trans community is, is paying the price for marriage equality. I think uh, the right wing, fright wingers as I call them, uh, saw what happened with Obergefell and how can we lash out because you didn't see any bathroom issues until we had marriage equality. Never. I mean, Never. They, it didn't, they didn't exist. And they still don't exist. And what they're purporting is that a, a sexual predator who is a male will pose as a transgender 
woman in order to get into a women's restroom and assault maybe uh, women and girls. I, That's their premise, and it's crazy. And, per, per, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. And, and further, they think that that person who's doing this, a sexual predator posing as a trans person, will then seek protection under the non-discrimination ordinance right. in the cities. See, the problem I see is that these people that are screaming that don't know what transgender means. Mm -hmm. They're they just using that as they dress up in drag. That's not necessarily true. Well, and the line right, that I exactly. love is one day they'll be a man, the next day a woman, yeah. and they'll go right, back and right, forth. Right. I don't know any transgender right. people who well, go back and forth. Right. Not only is it, you're correct, there's a problem with that. What, what Patty said, even if it de did happen, somebody dressed up, a, a male dressed up as a female and went into the, a women's restroom and assaulted a woman or a girl, there's already laws that, per, that will take care of that. It's yeah. called assault. I mean, that's right. illegal. It's already a crime. It's already a crime. Right. So, yeah. And you know what? You don't have to dress up as anything. You go into a bathroom and you exactly. assault somebody. It's assault. Exactly. <laughs> and and you don't dress up. And then they right. Exactly. <laughs> All the assault cases right. that I've ever covered, how the person was dressed was never an issue. Right. And law enforcement from all over the state, all the major cities, including Dallas, were there um, saying that they've done research in the last two years, across the last maybe two years, and found no incidents where um, a, a man dressing up as a woman in order to pretend to be trans and therefore access to bathroom committed a crime. There's nothing on them. None of this even happened anywhere in Texas. I or think anywhere nowhere in, in the, the United US. States. Or anywhere this in the United never States. Happened. Which There's is no why reporting. the bathroom bill passed the Senate this week, 21 to 10. But get this. Remember Friday, last, a week ago Friday, it seems like it's been a month, but a week ago Friday there were um, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who went to Austin and testified before the, the Senate committee um, about this, and they voted that that out 21 to 10. Um, but no, there was, that was the full Senate vote, but the committee vote was... Uh, whatever eight, the eight, eight to one, eight, eight to yeah, one. yeah, right. Um, uh, but there were 736 people who opposed SB three, mm -hmm. and 58 who supported it. 736 against it, 58 for it, and yet they passed it out of committee. So they they sat through the day. They had no plans to listen to anybody in front of them. Apparently, they got no the evidence. Texas, they got no evidence. No evidence whatsoever. And they just voted because this is what this is about bigotry. It's like it's not about water fountains and lunch counters. So I was down in Austin uh, for the opening of the session, and I was talking to Mary Gonzalez. Now Mary is our first lesbian state legislator. She uh, represents an area just outside of El Paso, very poor area. She ended up she was able to finally pass a bill uh, to bring running water to her district. Uh, because it's that poor of an area, part of the district uh, is that poor that they don't even have running water. So I said to Mary, well, you're lucky in your district, you don't have to worry about bathroom bills because you don't have bathrooms. And she said, oh, I'm definitely using that. <laughs> but, you know, that got vetoed. This, you know, to, to have bathrooms in the first place, we're so worried about bathrooms, we don't want her district to have them. You know, it, it's that kind of stupidity that's going on. Here's why I don't think it's all terrible news. I've never heard trans people being cheered the way I have over the last two weeks. Down in Austin, there was a protest on the front steps of the Capitol. I don't know why in July people are scheduling things on the south steps of the Capitol. It is so damn hot. There's shade on the north side of the building, and there are steps. Just saying. <laughs> However, it, is this, hot. it was 105 degrees that day. Um, Anyway, there were people who were protesting the bathroom bill, but it was people for Planned Parenthood, people against school vouchers, people who were for um, oh, just a whole variety of issues. Whatever the 20 issues were that are coming up on uh, in, in this session, yeah. what, there were people there representing them. Somebody gets up, talks about Planned Parenthood, yay! People are just talking about um, uh, school vouchers, oh yeah. Then somebody got up, uh, Carmarian Anderson, who was from here. She lives in Austin now. She's a, a preacher uh, who is transgender. She gets up talking about trans issues. This straight audience, when she spoke, 
was cheering. I have never seen a thousand straight people cheering for trans people the way they were on the front steps of the Capitol. It the, was that that was kind of heartening. The allies have just been amazing. IBM put an, an expensive ad, a full page ad in, in the four major Texas daily newspapers. Um, you know, saying this is not, this is this is the wrong thing to do. No one deserves to be treated this way or discriminated in the workplace or anywhere. And it was it was a powerful ad. And this is you know international business machines, which is you know an enormous company. Oh yeah. And there were so many companies that went that went down um, and spoke, and they submitted letters. Um, they wrote to the governor. Um, the business community is against this completely. Um, and not not just well, not because the whole business community. I think Hobby Lobby supports it. Uh, maybe Hobby Lobby. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> but most of the business community, um, by and large, in Texas, in the hospitality industry, and everyone is against this because it will drive away conventions and other visitors who and tourists who bring um, their dollars to Texas and businesses who are who expand in Texas and bring jobs here. Exactly, and what they, what I don't think. Um, Lois Colcourse or Dan Patrick really thinks about because they just want to say this there's going to be no negative impact is that um, millennials and so many others look to a company like let's say IBM or or um, a company based in Texas at Texas Instruments or, or wherever American they're, Airlines. they're aiming American Southwest Airlines, Airlines. They were all um, there. you know and say what is their policy toward the LGBT community and if there's if they can find nothing um, they they steer away from those companies. They want to know that they're going to go to a culture that welcomes everybody, and that's really important to them. And they don't want to move to Texas for a job where maybe that's not a real thing. That's maybe that culture doesn't exist. And so um, that's really important for them to to see that the state supports um, the LGBT community. Certainly doesn't go after them and target them for criminal acts mm -hmm. just for existing. Right. You know, it's crazy. We need to take a break. You're listening to Lemon to Weekly on 89.3 KNO on FM. I'm Dave Taffet here with uh, David Bridgman as our uh, guest and Patty and Lauren are here today. We'll be back with more Lemon to Weekly and we'll talk more about Austin, but we need to get to Washington and the craziness going on there right after this. Hi, this is Valetta Lell and I listen to Lemon to Weekly. I hope that you will too. And you're listening to Lambda Weekly. I'm Dave Teffitt here in the studio with Lauren Landis and the late Patty Fink and David Bridgman from the Miss Gay US of A. I keep saying the Miss Gay. From Miss Gay US of A pageantry. US of A pageants. Pageants you, is the company that owns all the different divisions. Okay. I ended the show almost, and uh, I'm not going to get it right no matter what. Every time I'm screwed up. Um, you see, A of U S. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're mm. talking. We were talking about the pageants, and you have um, a pageant coming up next week. It's going to be at the Roundup. Right. Um, that's Miss uh, Gay U S of A newcomer pageant, uh, which can be a fun one because you don't know what to expect with some of the newcomers, really. Uh, but lots, that's where the talent comes from, right. are all the new people coming in. Um, but we're, we've been talking about all this trans garbage that's been going on in Austin. Attacks and, on and trans. The, the attacks. Americans. Again, you know, I said in Austin, I saw a thousand people outside the Capitol building cheering when Carmarian Anderson was speaking about transgender rights. I've never seen that before. I'm not talking about, oh, yay. I'm talking about people standing up and cheering. On the late night talk shows, when after Donald Trump came out with his proposed ban or his tweet about... I was going to say a tweet. Uh, ...about banning transgender people from the military, uh, all the late night talk shows, the audiences cheered at the anti-Trump uh, monologues that, that they were doing. Which show was it who gave the opening monologue over to a transgender comedian to basically explain who they were? Cause like you said, David, part of the confusion that people are having or the the, the, the anti-trans stuff that's going on is because they don't even know what a transgender person is. Right. Um, but I think the reaction to this trans military ban because of the costs of health care. That was the excuse given. 
uh, shows how much preparation is done. Um, it, it, it's interesting. The reaction is a sudden, um, su sudden support for the trans community that I've never seen before. And it even came out of the Senate itself, yeah. and the Pentagon pushed back. I, I think the support you're talking about is. Most of the people may not even know a trans individual, but I think it's just a, is the support is probably just a matter of common sense. You know, I saw something somebody posted on Facebook. It's like, you know, if you're in the middle of comeback and you get injured and one of your fellow comrades comes to save you, they don't care what's between their legs. You know, um, okay, you're going to hear to help me. I'm, they're, not, they're, not trying to do, they're not trying to do a genital check. It doesn't matter. The head of the Joint Chief said something like that. All we're looking for are people who can do the job. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think that's what it's, most people with common sense realize. Who cares what gender they are or how they identify? They're here for comeback. They're our partners. And there are, there are LGBT and civil rights organizations have estimated there are about 15,000 trans, um, trans Americans. And in active and, duty. In active duty. In combat. And many, many of them in command positions. Mm -hmm. And their troops and... Uh, those around them have been incredibly supportive. Uh, we've heard reports, and you know the the fact that the Pentagon was caught off guard. Um, I think bodes well for for everyone. And they told the president, "If you're you can't Twitter a, a, a major military change, we have a I'm process. Not sure about that. Send it send no, it to us in I'm writing." I'm not sure about that. I think the Constitution does mention executive tweets. Yeah, right, it allows that. <laughs> it does allow that, David, doesn't it? That, that, yeah. Well, that's what I heard from Trump. Yeah. And you have this connection to him, it's having so been sued by him. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you know, let, let's look at the dollars, which we know is bogus about this reasoning for wanting to ban trans individuals. And like you said, health care was used as an excuse. Well, from the numbers that I heard, if, and again, that's another, like, like David was saying, if a trans individual is even on hormone therapy, they, they aren't, all of them are not. Um, we're talking about such a drop in the bucket of costs. They said it might be up for the around, defense budget. For the, for the defense budget, it might be up around two million dollars. That is literally well, pocket change on a budget of over five hundred and fifty billion dollars. Uh, it's nothing. What they say, point four percent. Not, not yes. four point, but point, point four percent. You know, I heard anywhere it could range <laughs> because they don't know how many transgender people are in the military right now. Could be between 2.8 and 7.8 million. 7.8 would be the outside number. You mean the for the budget? For the budget, yeah. Mil right. million dollars that it would actually cost in transgender health care. But let's talk Viagra. Right. Well, it's so more than that. Eighty-four that. million for <laughs> right. Viagra. Right. Yeah, this Makes is what no I want to know. To me. Why, why would you want Viagra when you're out there fighting? Exactly. Well, not just that. That sounds like every soldier is impotent. Very much. You can buy an off because if they're buying that much Viagra, whatever the price is over the open market, they're not paying that price. Right. They have a negotiated price. How many <laughs> people in the military are on Viagra? And how many are, you know, like, have reached the four hour mark <laughs> and have to run to the emergency room? I mean, what, what, that's an awful lot of Viagra. It's okay, shame. so we're saying 2.8 to 7.8 million. Here's a comparison I like. Protecting uh, Donald Trump's uh, golf trips to Mar-a-Lago, 20 million mm -hmm. in the first six months. What about, office. what about the security for his uh, hotel, not hotel, for his home in New York? Uh, for Melania being in New York, yes. 26.8 million. That's 46.8 million dollars was spent in six months protecting two people, as opposed to health care for 15,000 people, serving, putting their lives serving, on the line, right, serving their right, country exactly. by putting their lives on the volunteering line, volunteering their time. I don't yes. think Donald Trump was putting his life on the line on, at the golf course at Mar-a-Lago. Mar I, I just don't think that. But and I'm not saying he doesn't deserve protection. But I'm saying 15,000 people, I thought $7.8 million in health care for that many people was kind of a bargain. Pretty good. Uh-huh. That's I mean. So what we're, we're, I, I know it's hard to, like, come to, like, when you're talking about Donald Trump, it's hard to, like, come with any, like, uh, common sense. <laughs> but where do, you, where do you think this came out of? Just as a, a distraction for, because of the failed uh, health care 
um, build or what? And everything he does is a distraction. That's that's what I look at it. Distraction from Russia. Right. And the fact that this comes like at three or four in the morning. Right. Um, I think he's he's. Um, it's because of Viagra. He can't go to sleep. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? I think it, that's where all the Viagra is going. I think he's mulling around and and and. Um, you know, what you just chewing on this stuff for hours, and he gets himself worked up, and he just starts blurting this stuff on Twitter. And so he probably heard at some point during the day that the people in the House, the, the House members who were Republican and wanted to strip that medical provision from the bill for transgender service members, um, it probably came to his mind. He said, well, let's ban them all. And, and it that's didn't why pass. Just, Right, it, it didn't yeah. pass. They're still considering the bill, and now with McConnell, basically, you got you know McCain handed him his balls on a platter. Mm -hmm. I think, <laughs> you know, because they boxed themselves in. Now they were going to do this by re budget reconciliation, and now they can't do that. Mm -hmm. And so now they've lost their one opportunity to use budget as a reason to change health care. Now they do need sixty votes. They can't get sixty votes. They, they couldn't get fifty. They couldn't get fifty. They couldn't get fifty. So now that means going to committee. Or as Donald, Trump, <laughs> as Donald Trump said, they had 48 votes and who knows how many votes uh, were against. He, oh, didn't, really? he didn't know how many senators there were. <laughs> well, he didn't know how long the, uh, Obamacare has been in re uh, existence. Well, 17 he, he thought years. It was 17 17 years. It was 17 yeah. years, wasn't it? Back when Obama was elected back in the 90s. Isn't that what went in? <laughs> right. Yep. <laughs> After he came back from Kenya. When he first moved to the yeah, country. Yeah, when he first moved to the country. I, I think that's what yeah. it was. Yeah. yeah. God. <laughs> He's such an idiot. And then and then he tells, uh, he speaks to the Boy Scouts in the most um, vulgar of ways to talk to innocent young minds and get them to cheer not liking Obama and get them to, to, to cheer against Hillary. And, I mean, all of those things were just, I was mortified that he would speak to 45,000 young boys in a way that they'll never forget. I mean, they'll. That's, that's they saw the president of the United States speaking in this way. You, they saw the president speaking. They're not going to forget that, no sure. matter what he said. It's important what you say to kids. And, it's, and he didn't inspire them. He just ragged on about himself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and his own problems and his own needs. He took care of himself in that whole speech. He didn't take care of any of these. <clears throat> These boys, maybe what they needed to understand about building character and and trying hard and working hard. He didn't, he's not like that at all. But then he turned around and told the police, uh, law enforcement agencies all across the country to rough up suspects. Don't be so nice. Yeah. If, they're, if you're protecting their head going in the car, mm -hmm. don't do that anymore. Let them bump their head. You know, I mean, what was that? I, I just think he thinks he's still campaigning. I don't know why, but for the next election, the 2020 election. And I think he thinks that because he wants to stay in campaign mode, that none of these laws apply to him. I mean, the mere fact that for weeks, for two weeks now, maybe even less, because it seems like it's, you know, Trump time is so slow, um, that he's, you know, he's been bashing um, Attorney General Sessions, and I never thought I would, like, like feel any sympathy for for Jefferson Beauregard. Yeah, there's something I, wrong when we're cheering for uh, Sessions, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, <laughs> <laughs> Reince Priebus. <laughs> right, right, exactly. It's like, oh, who's he going to go after this week? Uh -huh. But, I mean, going after after Sessions, he's basically admitting, I he said it over and over, I wouldn't have hired him had I known he wasn't going to protect me from this Russia right. investigation. That's what he's saying. But any attorney general actually would have to recuse himself mm -hmm. from any investigation that has to do with the president, according to Justice Department rules. The uh, head of the Justice Department, who is the attorney general, is not supposed to participate in any uh, investigation that involves somebody with whom you have a political uh, connection. The president appoints the attorney general. You have an, a political appointment. The attorney general cannot be involved in this. And mentioning the Department of Justice, they've done a complete reversal from when, when Obama was in office. They are now saying that current law does not protect gays from discrimination in terms of employment. So Title Seven is Title right Seven, time. yeah. So that's but so far the um, appeals courts are agreeing with the government. 
uh, and it went to the second court of appeals, which is New York. It's a fairly liberal court. It's not as liberal as uh, the Ninth Circuit out in California, but uh, so far they've uh, they agreed on the regular trial at the or the regular hearing at the Second Circuit. Now it's at an en banc hearing, which means the full court mm-hmm. is hearing it. Um, but this is going to be one of those appeals court splits because we have an appeals court that said absolutely. <laughs> They're covered, and then it'll have to go to the U.S. Supreme Court. So it's almost good that the that there is that split, so that the U.S. Supreme Court can uh, can, can rule on that while we still have Kennedy <laughs> on the court. Well, this this just reinforces why we need a national endozo bad. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, it'll never happen under this current administration, but we do need it. Mm-hmm. Well, I think I think dropping the the endo approach though has been a good thing. They're just going for the Equality Act. Which, which the end of would only protect us in employment. And by putting us in the Civil Rights Act as, a, as an appending to the Civil Rights and Act, here's what's interesting. we get public accommodations, right. you know, employment, we get housing, we get all the, all the coverages. When they were talking about uh, ending trans military personnel, um, we had about 10 Republican senators who came out and made statements against, and people like John McCain are making these statements that, remember when he said this during gays in the military and during some of the other debates, nobody should be discriminated against. Huh? And Grassley from Iowa. Uh-huh. Oh, and Ernst oh, from and Iowa. Orrin Hatch. Yeah, that <laughs> was the one that got me, Orrin from Hatch. Utah? Orrin Hatch. Yeah. Nobody should be discriminated against. Huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember when we were you know, during the uh, same-sex marriage debates, and yeah, I remember you were saying nobody should be discriminated. Where is this coming from? That's the other reason, though, that I'm saying that I think this this stupidity on Twitter is actually good. We have the Orrin Hatch saying nobody should be discriminated against that he likes transgender people. Really? I feel I mean, I've. I feel really concerned, though, about the, the trans people who have come out in the military since June of last mm-hmm. year when uh, the Obama administration um, and the Department of Defense, the Defense Secretary, said this is not, uh, the, the ban's going to go away. We've got we to figure out a way um, to implement it, but everyone is welcome to serve. Trans people are welcome to serve, and many did come out. And if if this policy is handed to the Defense Department and they have to go through with it um, because he's commander-in-chief, I mean, if they studied everything to, to pieces when we did Don't Ask, Don't Tell repeal, but um, if they just want to blam, you know, put it back in, and these folks are really vulnerable. And this is a president who says, rough people up. Right. Do you know, and, and I'll, pay their, I'll pay their legal fees at his rallies. You know, beat them up. And one of the reasons that a number of these military people did come out as transgender was because they wanted to give the Defense Department, Logan Ireland is one, he's from Dallas, who, who's serving, he's a trans man. Um, they came out in order to show the military I'm serving with distinction. I have no problems. I don't have extra milit- you know, health costs. I don't, I'm not a burden on my division. In fact, I'm a decorated military person. Uh, and they came out for that reason to help other people. So they did it for all the right reasons, not because, not for any self glory or anything, but to help other people coming along behind them. And now this, I still say this is a good thing because, um, it, it was like ten, the, the senator from Alaska and not Murkowski, the conservative one, came out and said, no, people shouldn't be discriminated against. We're, we're only looking for the best people in the military. Remember when they said that for the gays in the military debate? Yeah, neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> that brings us to the end of another show. David, uh, thank David, you for thank being you with so us. Much. Yeah, thank thanks you thanks for coming on. Yeah. Uh, next week, Candy Markham's our guest, and we'll be back with more of Lambda Weekly then. This is William, hopefully your favorite videographer from Two Hats Publishing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please leave comments below or like, follow, or subscribe to us and get notices of all our videos. We love it, even when you call.